Welcome to the North Pole of Lathe, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program Part 6, where I'll show you guys how to get to the gas planet Joule and to any of its moons using the ship I'm linking in the .crat file. As you can see, however, I did not land in the best of ways. I'm definitely not coming home, but the ship itself will get you to Joule with plenty of fuel left to maneuver to whichever moon you want to. And if you watch the video all the way through, you'll definitely see how many times I messed up and how many times I had to readjust my orbit, which resulted in me, you know, using up all my fuel. So if you have a better orbital track than I do, you'll be able to get to any moon you want to with this rocket design and possibly make it back. Just like with all my other videos, you're going to need to align the planets correctly before you take off by fast forwarding on the launch pad. And in this case, you're going to want to get a 96 degree angle between Joule, Kerbal, which is the sun, and Kerbin, the planet. In addition to that, you're going to want to turn towards that 90 degree heading at each atmospheric change. Just like you, what you would do with other heavy rockets. Now with those few basic rules in mind, let's go ahead and fly to Joule. Now this is easily the hardest part and the most critical part of the entire Joule trip is getting your transfer orbit perfect because it has to be. It's just even the slightest millimeter of an error drawing this orbit results in millions of meters difference once you arrive. And as you can tell, I'm getting it really pretty close. I mean, still, I'm still millions of meters out, but the main, the key, most important thing to do when transferring to Joule is to make sure that you're as equatorial of an orbit around Joule as you can get because what happened to me was I ended up going beneath Joule and in order for me to intercept and burn I ended up coming in at kind of a weird slanted not polar but just kind of at a 45 degree angle from where I needed to be at that equatorial mark orbit and ended up screwing up the whole rest of my process at Joule as you will see but this is definitely the most key and most critical part to the entire mission is just getting the transfer right. It takes a lot of patience, it's kind of tedious, but if you can manage to get it right, you're set for the rest of the trip. Now I just passed the apoapsis on my trip. I'm coming into the orbit or to uh, encounter Jewel. It looks like everything's going well, but because of the way the orbital camera works, or the orbital map camera works, when I'm plotting my maneuvers from Kerbin, it's hard for me at least to tell the depth. Maybe I'm missing out on some, some sort of keybind where I can free camera in or the orbital map view, but it's very hard for me to tell depth. And as a result, once I encounter Joule, I notice that I'm under Joule. And I, oh, this, 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 the same thing that happened to me, I think two times ago when I went to Joule, and it, oh man, devastating. Cause you waited all that time, both burning, getting your orbit back in Kerbin, you know, you quick saved a lot, and now you finally make it to Jewel and you've got your, you encounter this. So in case you find yourself in the same position, what I did to fix it, kind of, was instead of waiting till the periapsis to plot your maneuver, 
I started my maneuver way early and I ended up pulling it back even to almost, you know, an hour away from my current location uh, of my capsule or my ship. That way you don't get this insane polar orbit and you still have a chance to change it. Sure, it's going to take as much delta V as it did for me to get to Joule to change my orbit. So there's plenty of fuel on the spacecraft. I mean, there's enough to get to Joule twice. And so, uh, and that's that, that's minimum. So you can get to Joule probably three or four times the amount of fuel on board this thing. So it's a great craft, bad human management. I did a terrible job setting up this orbit. But anyways, I end up correcting it here, as you'll see in just a second. So I correct it, get it into a much more equatorial um, sort of orbit, and I get my periapsis down to where I need it to be, which, by the way, if you're going to try an aero break onto Joule, the atmosphere begins at 145,000 meters. But in order to aero break, you're going to want to hit Joule's atmosphere at about, or in between, 125,000 meters and 120,000 meters. Anything less than that, you might get swallowed up by Joule, Anything more than that, you'll just kind of skip off it, and you won't really uh, have the effect that you want to. Although you can go around for another pass if you overshoot it, and then once you come back around for that second time, you can just simply burn retrograde a little bit to get a little deeper into the atmosphere and have a much more strong error breaking effect the second time around. So hope not all hope is lost if you come in a little too high and miss it. It's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to that, otherwise you'll just lose your entire spaceship. Once you have your orbit established and you're fast forwarding, uh, this is just a tip for any sort of planetary transfer or orbit, anything like that. You'll notice it was only like a 10 day or so travel time, but nine of those days were spent at the very, very top of my orbit furthest away. And as you get closer, you go from just a couple hundred or several several hundred meters a second all the way up to 10,000 or so as you get close to the planet. So you can easily, if you're doing this to the planet that didn't have as thick of atmosphere, you can easily just slingshot around it real quick and miss your, your, your window that you wanted to arrive at, your periapsis. So that's just something to keep in mind, just a little helpful hint. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my craft so I have as much surface area as possible. Uh, hitting the atmosphere, and then I'll uh, be right back. Once you've finished aero braking, your orbit should be pulled in significantly. Uh, however, in my case, I still needed to pull it in some more, so I was go I'm going to have to do a second pass. But my orbit also is still at a, some sort of incline. It's not perfectly equatorial like I want it to be. And I'm still beneath lathe. So there's a lot of problems going on here. And again, this is not an example of what to do. This is more of a worst case scenario. If you're out trying to get somewhere in, within the system of Jules Moons. This is a great video to see and figure out how to fix what you broke. So, again, I'm not the best at Kerbal Space Program, but this is how I fix the problems I get into. So hopefully it'll help you all also. So after orbiting a second time and re-entering Jules' atmosphere again, after swinging back around my orbit, it accidentally resulted in my apoapsis being a little bit too shallow. As you can see, I'm not underneath or even close to Lathe's orbital path anymore. So what I'm going to have to do is once I swing back around to my apoapsis again, is I need to thrust into the prograde to push out my periapsis to above Joule's atmosphere, so above 145,000 meters. That way, when I swing back again for the third time, I won't get sucked into the atmosphere, and before I hit the periapsis, I'll be able to push out my apoapsis. So after all that maneuvering, I can finally get close to Lace orbital path, and hopefully have an encounter, you know, within the next couple months in game, 
so that I can then retrograde burn in order to hit Lathe's atmosphere, hopefully shallow enough to where it will take in my craft and I can land successfully. But not only that, once I get captured by Lathe, it's like 90 or 80% water, so I'm gonna have to pray that I land on some sort of ice cap or some sort of land mass because by this point, I've done so much thrusting and maneuvering that I'm getting really low on fuel because I've essentially burned to Joule, burned the equivalent amount of Delta V to get to Joule for a second time, and now once I get captured by Lathe, I'm going to have to burn again the equivalent amount of Delta V that it took me to get all the way to Joule again. So essentially, by the time I get captured by Lathe, I've burned the amount of fuel equivalent to get to Joule three times. Alright, so I've plotted a new orbital maneuver, and now I'm burning towards that maneuver. Almost done. I've been burning for about three minutes or so. And as you can tell, I ended it to where my apoapsis would be just below lathes. Again, I'm still crooked, but it's close enough to where I can still get captured by lathe. Although, I will be directly below it at the time of the capture. Which is unfortunate, but that's just what happens. So I go ahead and fast forward a couple months in game, and there I go, get my capture, which is excellent. So swing back around, and now I'm captured. But again, look at that positioning. Oh yay! So I hold. Look how long I'm holding down this maneuver node at full extension. That's going to be a ton of delta V. Very, very bad orbital mechanics on my part. This is the least efficient way ever to get to Lathe in the history of Kerbal Kind. I'm forced to burn so much Delta V that I'm using my landing and ascent stage to return back to Earth to get enough fuel in order to land on Lathe. So I have to ditch the lander legs. And that's the reason in the beginning you saw me on my side, is because this stage has no landing legs at all. Luckily it has a parachute and has all the science material, so I can still gather the science I want and transmit it, but it won't be very pretty because I'm going to be on my side, on lathe, if I land on land. And at this time I did not know that I'd even land on solid ground once I got to lathe after all this work. I mean, this took me about, this took me several hours to do. So it's just insane. N craziness. After burning for several minutes, I finally get the capture. I just, I put my orbital path just directly into the lace surface because I have to be captured. Because if I'm not captured by the atmosphere, I'm just going to go right around and orbit for forever. Because if you can't tell, but down in the bottom left, I have an ounce of fuel left in this stage. So, very lucky this all worked out. Deployed the chute on accident a little bit early since I had my stages set up to where I should be landing on lathe with that entire stage that I ditched earlier. So, bef I would, typically I would have all the chutes deployed before I ditched the lander legs to take off. So, the staging was all out of whack. My parachute was already deployed. Luckily, it had a lot of drag that slowed me down. But kind of in a in a weird, fortunate in a fortunate way. I got to land in a very special part of Lathe that I don't see many people land in typically, and that's the North Pole. You get this really, really cool, but because of the way it orbits, it's, it's tidally locked around Joule, so it never really, it's not on an axis that spins, so the North Pole constantly has a twilight effect. It's very, very cool. You see Joule in the distance, you see half of it popping over the horizon. And then the sun is always to your side, so it's kind of in like a a lit up horizon but dark surface. It's it's very very cool, very cool. Lathe is an amazing planet, but here I am coming down. I think at this point, or I thought at this point, my descent stage would just blow up, but lo and behold, everything survives. <laughs> I could have actually probably kept it on if the ground was perfectly level. It probably would have stood upright, but. I wasn't that fortunate, and I end up landing on the northern ice cap. How cool is that? Look at the, you get Jewel in the background, you get the sun, the two moons to the left. Such a cool feeling. 
I hope you guys get to do this as well. Even if you crash land, I highly recommend going to Lathe at some point. Such a cool planet. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. More of a survival guide this episode because I'm a terrible long distance pilot. But just goes to show that even if you're really bad at orbital mechanics and flying around, if you just have some persistence, it's still possible to get even to those harder to reach places like Lathe. So hopefully this helps you guys out, especially those of you that are having issues like I do with orbital mechanics. The ship linked in the description below has so much fuel. If I can do this, you guys can definitely do this. So get out there and try to get to Lathe. I'll see you guys next time.